with the troubles of the world, troubles of the world, troubles of the world. Now we'll be done with the troubles of the world, going home to live with God. Now we'll be done with the troubles of the world, troubles of the world, troubles of the world. Now we'll be done with the troubles of the world, going home. Peter. Peter, wake up. I wasn't sleeping. I was praying. 
Still hoping that your God will save you? He's already done that, Lucius. I meant save you from execution. They're calling for your blood, you know. Yes, I heard them. <laughs> but you know what I meant. Yes, no need to go into that again. But Lucius, that is what really matters. That is why I am here. You want me to believe as you do, is that it? Yes. And end up like this? Facing certain death? No, thank you. My life may not be much, but it's not just about to end like yours. How do you know that? How do you know that the executioner won't get his hands on you before he gets his hands on me? That, that could happen, you know. Oh, yes, that could happen. But it won't. Look, let's not talk about this right now. Here, brought you something. What is it? Let's see. Looks like some bread, some fruit of the vine. John Mark, he didn't forget. Yes, your Christian friend. He said that you would want it something about remembering to do oh, something. Oh, to do this in remembrance of him. Him? No, not him, not John Mark. Him. Jesus. Not him. Yes, him. This bread, this is broken body. And this fruit of the vine, it was the blood that he shed. You do this to commemorate his death? Yes. His crucifixion? Yes, Lucius. We Christians, we celebrate our Lord's death on the cross. You Christians are mad. How can you celebrate a man's bloody execution? In dying, he saved me. What? His death. His death gave me a new life. How? Jesus truly was... No, no, no. Jesus truly is the Son of God. Why'd you say that? Because I know it's true. No! Why'd you say that? You wish to mock me? To torment me? No, Lucius, I need... Silence! You, you prisoner, I will not be mocked. I don't know how you know, but... Know what? I said silence! How could you celebrate such a day? It was madness! Madness! I want to forget.
Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Aren't you supposed to be the Son of God? Save yourself and us! Don't you fear God? You're getting the same as him. We deserve to die, but not him. He did nothing to deserve this. Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, I tell you the truth. Today, you will be with me in paradise. <laughs> Woman, behold your son. Behold your mother. God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I thirst. of truth. It is finished. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. This man was the son of God.
eternity I'll sing on I'll sing on and through eternity I'll sing on You were right. He is. What? Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. God himself. I don't know what made me say that. You were an eyewitness. You saw the just die for the unjust. Unjust? Yeah, you. And me. Why? So that he could bring us to God. You were an eyewitness to his majesty. Like me. Oh, I still remember that day on the boat. When he called me and my brother Andrew to follow him. I can't believe this. Nothing. Nothing. We've been out here all night and we've got nothing. Peter, if it keeps going like this, we're gonna lose the business, we're gonna lose the boat, we're gonna lose everything. I, I know, Andrew, but somehow, I don't care. You don't care? All right, Peter, what is going on with you? I mean, I'm your own brother, and I feel like I don't know you anymore. It's Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I see. All I can think about is what he said. I have never heard anyone speak like him before. Hey, yeah, you remember that time he stood up in the synagogue to read the words of the prophet Isaiah? He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And he has sent, sent me, me to proclaim release to the captives? Yeah. Recovery of sight to the blind? To set free those who are oppressed to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, and then he said, this day, scripture has been fulfilled in your ears. Nobody said a word. No. I don't even think that I was breathing at that point. You know, Peter, I mean, I really think he could be the Messiah. What? Come on, Andrew. The Messiah? Yes. Really? Yes. No. <laughs> no. 
I am, oh, I am not ready to go that far. But I do know that I want to hear him speak more. I think about what he said, and I'm even thinking of taking some time off to hear him speak more. Off the boat? Yeah, yeah, I know, we, I know, I know, I know. We've we just been out here all I night. I know, it's crazy. Yeah, it is. I have a wife and children to provide for, a business to run. Have you told any of this to your wife? Uh-huh, yeah. You did. I, I did. Mm -hmm. And she told her mother, of course. <laughs> of course, of course she did. And you being her favorite son-in-law and everything, I'm sure she was filled with joy and blessed you, right? Yeah, with every blessed name in the book. <laughs> Unfit husband, lousy provider, a fool, <laughs> good for nothing fool to be exact, and totally deceived. You know, bedridden and burning up with a fever. That old woman, she found enough strength to remind me of what a bum that I was. <laughs> was? Yes, was. Then Jesus, he came to the house and he healed her. Just like that. And now? Oh, now she cannot stop talking about him. Amazing a Jesus! A wonderful a Jesus! Oh, that every mother should have a son <laughs> as good as this uh, Jesus. And because Jesus came to see me, now she actually thinks that I might be good for something after all. <laughs> well, in that case, we know it's the Messiah, right? Come on. But seriously, Peter, I mean, do you really think you're ready to follow him? What? Follow him? Where? I don't know. Anywhere. You're the one that said you wanted to hear more. So let's hang up our nets. Let's go. Now, what makes you think that he'd be interested in us? In me? He came to your house. Andrew! We're not holy men. We're, we're fishermen. fishermen. We fish. Wait a we minute. Don't... Wait a minute. Isn't that him coming this way? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh, Simon Peter, may I come stand in your boat? Yes. So I'm telling you that you should love your enemies and you should do good to those that hate you. Bless those that curse you and pray for those that mistreat you. If someone should come up to you and strike you on the cheek, turn to him the other also. <laughs> Do unto others as you would have them do to you. Oh, but woe to you who are rich, for your only happiness is in this life. And woe to you who are well fed, for soon you will be hungry. And woe to you who laugh so carelessly now, for soon your laughter will be turned to mourning and to sorrow. Simon Peter. Why don't you take this boat, launch out there into the deep, and cast your nets on the right side of the boat for a big catch? <laughs> we, we have been fishing here all night, and we didn't catch anything. But if you say so, all right, I guess we'll give it a try. We will. Peter, it's the middle. I want to go home. I'm hungry. We didn't catch any fish. What are you going to eat? We didn't get... Uh, uh.
After all night, we didn't catch a thing. We just talked about this. Oh, we gotta go again. Yeah, we gotta go fishing. But you just wait. Understand, please. Can, can you just go away? Why do you even care about me? I am nothing more than a sinful man. I have plans for you. I have plans for all of you. From now on, you will catch men instead of fish. I will show you. Follow me. Follow me. Okay. No, we're not going with the fish. Look at all the fish. Here. Are you serious? Teacher, teacher, do you see this female? She was caught in adultery in the very act. Now, Moses in the law commands us to stone her to death. But you, what do you say, teacher? Well, answer us. Whoever is sinless among you, go first, throw a stone. Woman, where are your accusers? Does no one condemn you? No one, Lord. Neither do I. Come. Go on your way. Hey, and from now on, don't sin. Your brother will be raised up. I know. I know he will be raised on the resurrection day, at the end of time. 
Martha, I am the resurrection and the life now. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord. I have believed. I do believe. You are the Messiah. The Son of God has come into the world. Good. Please, go ask your sister to come. Mary? Master, if you would have only been here, my brother, Lazarus, would not be dead. <laughs> Where have you put him? Come and see. Remove the stone. Master, wait. He stinks. <laughs> He's been dead for four days. Didn't I tell you that if you believed that you would see the glory of God? Remove the stone. Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always listen. But I'm speaking now so that the one standing here might believe that you have sent me. Lazarus, come out.
all that we care about to follow you. We left our homes, our families, our plans. We've been with you for over two years now. A little while longer, you have the light with you. Walk while you have the light. For the Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men. And they will kill him. But on the third day, he will be raised up. He talks as if he's going to die. I don't like any of this. The Passover, it's a celebration. But I am not getting a good feeling about this. I love Jesus, but I don't understand this. Why would... Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. אחת, שתיים, שלוש, ארבע, חמש, שש, שבע, שמונה, תשע, עשר, אחת עשרה, שתים עשרה, שלוש עשרה. What you're about to do, go, do it quickly. I have really been looking forward to spending this time with you. This Passover feast is very special to me. because it will be my last. This bread, this bread is my body that is broken for you. From now on, whenever you eat this feast, Remember me and the things that I'm telling you. And now, take this cup. Let us drink from it together. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. my blood that is shed for all of you.
So now, I give you a new commandment. Love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. And if you love each other, then the entire world will know that you are my disciples. Lord, where are you going? Where I'm going, you cannot go now. But you will follow me later. But why can't I go now? I'm ready, I'm ready to die for you. Die for me? No. Before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. Oh, but let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. Arise now. Let us go and pray.
What? That man. The one they're holding in the high priest's house? You know him. I saw you together. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. The one they call Jesus? No, you are wrong! I do not know him. I have never heard that name. I know you know him. You are a disciple of his. This Jesus, what trouble is he in? I am not one of his. I don't even know the man. Now we see what is really happening. You are one of his. You are wrong. I am right, for you are also a Galilean. You are a follower of Christ. Damn you! I am not! I do not know the man! Oh, God. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? I, I said that I, I said I never knew him. I abandoned him. And now, he's, he's dead. Three years are, are gone. Oh, God. What am I supposed to do now? Peter. Peter. It was the worst day of my life. Your teacher, your friend was dead. Oh, I, I denied him. And I executed him. He died. We put a spear in him to make sure. I saw the wounds in his hands, in his feet. And in his side. How? You weren't at the cross. You weren't there when we sealed his tomb. He showed them to me himself. The tomb was not his end. You saw him? You saw him. All I saw was... All you saw was what? Nothing. No. You saw something. <laughs> you see? Why am I telling you this? What? Was the third day after his crucifixion. Morning. I was in charge. There were rumors that you and the other followers of Jesus would try and steal his body. Choose to win. 
Why are you looking for the living one in a cemetery? He is not here. He is risen. Just like he said he would. Now go quickly and tell his disciples and Peter that he is risen. was gone. <laughs> no, no, no. Jesus was alive. He is alive. He conquered death. The grave couldn't hold him. I wish it had. Your risen Lord cost me my career. I was blamed for losing the body. I was demoted from my rank of centurion down to the common jailer you see before you now. Guess I should be happy my life was spared. Oh, truly this was the Son of God. <laughs> You're still angry? Yes! Yes, I am! Do you know how it feels to be a failure? To lose everything you worked so hard to get. To even lose respect for yourself. Yeah, I think I do. Perhaps you do. But I know the God of all grace, who strengthens and restores, and he put me back on my feet again. been fishing. Not one single fish. Hey, I thought that you said that this would be a good spot. Well, it always used to be. Now, three years ago, maybe. Oh, I was stupid to ever listen to you, John. Hey, calm down, Peter. Thanks. It was your idea to come here what in the first place. What? Wait, what, what? I don't know how to catch a fish anymore? Is that did we, it? Did we say that? No. No one's blaming you, Peter. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I see the way you, you all, you, you look at me, and I know, I know what, you, what you're thinking. Really? What are you thinking? Yeah, you're thinking Peter's lost it ever since he denied the Lord. 
Nobody thinks that, Peter. Oh, oh, yes, you do. Do you want to know how I know? That's because I think the same thing. Peter, we're not. No, no, we're no. Not, we're quiet, not. quiet, quiet. Quiet, all of you. I did it. I denied Jesus. I, I said I would die for him. But I didn't. I denied him. Three times. Three yeah. times. No one is blaming you. No one is blaming you. Nobody even has to. I blame myself. I was a coward. I was afraid. I made a promise that I could not keep. And now, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with the rest of my life. I don't even think that I know who I am anymore. And obviously, I cannot catch a fish. Come on, Peter. Oh, boys. Have you caught any fish? No. no. <laughs> well then, cast your nets on the right-hand side of the boat, and you will. <laughs> sure. Right-hand side? Who is really? this guy? Right. We're going to do it? No. <laughs> sure, yeah, are we going to ever? Right-hand side, yeah. Uh, kidding? Or <laughs> sure. Oh, 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 oh. Please, just go away. I am nothing more than a sinful man. Why do you even care about me? Because I have plans for you. All of you. From now on, you will catch men instead of fish. I will show you. Follow me. Peter, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord. You know I love you. Then feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Then feed my sheep. The truth is, when you were younger, you were able to go wherever you wanted to go, to do whatever you wanted to do. But when you're older, you will stretch out your hands and you'll go where you do not want to go. Remember, follow me. Follow me. We followed him as best we could. Sometimes he would just appear out of nowhere and eat with us, and talk with us. You may not believe me, but there were hundreds who saw Jesus alive and in the flesh after his crucifixion. And then, one day, in Bethany, he stopped, he blessed us, and then, and then, and then he ascended up into heaven. His, his last words, they still ring in my ears. All power has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age.
I am with you always. <laughs> Do you really believe that? Where is he now? Looks like it's just you and me here, Peter. No, he's here. I can't see him, but I know he's here. He's my living hope, my joy unspeakable. He's my Lord and Savior. You submit yourself to a God that you cannot see. But I have seen him. And so have you. You said so yourself. He truly was the Son of God. Yes, but... And you were there in the garden when he rose from the dead. Yes, I was there, but... But what? I never saw Jesus again after he was laid in that tomb. For all I know... Yeah. You and your other friends... Uh-huh. You stole his body. You stole his body, and then you, you, you made up this resurrection story so that his promise to rise on the third day would seem like it came true. <laughs> Is that what you believe? Is that what you really believe? That all of us Christians are willing to be tortured and killed? For a lie? You think I'm waiting here to be crucified on a cross to perpetuate a lie so that more people would believe that lie and then they would be killed? Is that what you think? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe? Oh, Lucius. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. I don't want to believe that, but... No, what... What is it? Can, can, you, can you tell me? You don't know how much I want to believe. How much I wish I could. But how could he? But how, how could he? How could Jesus... I heard the betrayer, Judas, he killed himself. And all he did was kiss Jesus. But me, I spat on him. I whipped him. I put a crown of thorns on his head. I mocked him. I cursed him. And then I crucified him with spikes through his hands and his feet. Lucius. And I lied. I took their filthy money and I lied. I said that you and the others stole his body from the grave while we slept. The leaders promised to protect me. But I guess they didn't trust me. Because they shipped me back to Rome and busted me down the jailer. Peter, you denied Jesus, and he forgave you. But I was the man who killed him, the Son of God. L Lucius, please come on. Peter, take this. Use it. Strike me down. Lucius, I, I can't do this. But why not? I deserve death. If I was to kill you now, you would go straight to hell. And there is no need of that. God is merciful, Lucius. But I took an innocent man's life. I crucified the Son of God. No. 
you're wrong. You didn't take Jesus' life from him. He was the son of God. No man could take his life from him. He had to give it willingly. And he did. Jesus took your place on the cross and shed his blood to set you free from the fear and the guilt and the shame that you feel because of sin. But, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Lucius, you heard him. He forgave you. God loves you, Lucius. I, I don't deserve this. Who does? Nobody, Lucius. It's grace. It's a gift that we don't deserve and that we could never earn. Please take it and let God love you. How? Pray. W with me. Jesus, be merciful to me, a sinner. Please, be my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I don't know what it is, but I know that something is different. It's like a heavy weight has been lifted off my shoulders. That's because you were a new man, Lucius. Old things, they passed away. Behold, all things, they've become brand new. The drums, they're the signal. Time to go. Lucius, Lucius, Lucius. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These are yours now. To celebrate his death? Yes. And his life with, with other believers. But I don't want you to die. Not like this. I will suffer, but I won't taste death. I partake of Christ's suffering to reveal his glory. To God be the glory and honor forever. for this message to us here tonight. And we ask you would speak to each and every heart in these closing few minutes. Speak to each and every one of us, Lord, we pray in your name. Amen. In the play that we just witnessed, we saw many biblical truths uh, the Gospels being played out, the personalities of the disciples, and most importantly, the purpose of Christ, that Christ came into the world more than just to be a teacher 
more than just to be a friend of people or a good rabbi, but he came to be our savior. When he died on the cross, he shed his blood so our sins could be atoned for. And in receiving him and believing in him, there's a new birth, a new life. It happened to Peter, the primary character in the play, who even denied the Lord three times, but was forgiven, restored, and given a new life. And then at the end here we see, and through the play, Lucius, the centurion, who had been there at the crucifixion, later in his life, he also believed. We want you who have come here tonight and thank you. And we've been praying for this play to speak to people, most importantly, into the heart personally that I need Christ. I need him personally. We as a church have been praying and put the play on every year for that purpose. And we want to give you an opportunity to say in your heart, yes, I believe in Christ. Just like Lucius, though many things in his mind and in his life would say no, he came to the place where he said yes. And you must do that. We say this lovingly, convincingly, and persuasively. You must make a decision and put your faith and trust in Christ who was raised from the dead. He really was. The evidences are everywhere. We prove them in our Bible, in history, by our apologetics and our arguments, and in our own personal lives. It's true. And no matter who you are here tonight, maybe you have done some atrocious things, maybe things you're very disgusted about and ashamed of. We invite you, Jesus came for you. He came for us, he came for the sinner. He came for the imperfect people. He came for people with trouble and failure and sin, loneliness, disappointment. And he's alive and he's real. I want to ask you tonight just to say this prayer in your heart. Lord Jesus, I trust in you. Help me, teach me, lead me. I want you to say that simple prayer, one like it. Lord Jesus, I receive you, I believe in you. And then I'd like you just to raise your hand in the air and say, I have said that prayer. Would you do that, please? Just raise your hand. Thank you. I can't see, uh, but I believe that there are hands raised. Thank you. And then I'd like you just to come down front here because um, our ushers and workers will take you to the side here and give you a free Bible and some literature and uh, encourage you. So just come on down. Don't feel um, uncomfortable with that. Just come down front here and I'll shake your hand. And I'd love to, for you just to come on down and we'll take you to the side. God bless you. Thank you. Come on down. As they're coming, I want you to think about this. Making a decision. Making a decision like these folks are doing. God bless you. Great, great.
come on down. Make a decision. It's simple, very real, very profound, very powerful. It's very simple. Making a decision. Making a decision. You know, sometimes we don't make a decision, and that's a decision. If I have to go to school on a Monday morning, and I just don't, I just decide to stay in bed that's a decision I miss the day of school that's a decision but I might say I didn't make any decision yes you did you decided to stay in bed that was your decision the same with God God put us here on the earth and he says I sent my son would you please trust him Put your trust in him. That's your decision. That's the only decision that I must make as a person. I, 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 there are many, but that's the primary one before God. You believe in God? Fine. Believe in his son. Make a decision. It's simple. We saw it in the play. We think about it in our lives. Many times people trust in their own way. They're afraid of a commitment or a decision. They're afraid they don't know what it will mean to, in their life practically. But we want to encourage you. It's beautiful. It's the only way. It's like a man in an airplane and the airplane's on fire. And he says, I'm not going to make any decision. I'm just going to go down. I'm just going to do what's natural. Another man puts a parachute on and he makes a decision to jump. He makes a decision. The same with this message that God is saying to us. Come to me as you are. Believe in me. Make a decision. Trust in me. I am the loving God, the caring God, the personal God. Come to me as you are. Is there anyone else here tonight? Just come on down and make that decision. Just come as you are. Just come on down as you are. You might say, I'd like to clean up my life for six months. And then I'll come to Jesus. And we say, I don't think you'll ever make it. You, you never, you won't make it. If you're trusting in your own way, your own righteousness your own power your own strength but you come as you are as a sinner and he saves you by his grace just as you are come as you are isn't that true i remember sitting in an assembly like this years ago and uh, it was hard for me and uh but then i decided that I don't know these people. I don't know exactly what church I'm in. I don't know where I am exactly. But the message had the right sound. And tomorrow is Easter. He is risen. Christ is risen. And he's the one that we put our trust in. He's the one that we're leaning upon and believing in and trusting in. He's the one that gives us the new life and the anointing of the Spirit the work of the Spirit, the grace of God, and the power of God in our lives personally. Is there anybody else? One more, two more, five more, ten more people? Come on down front here. I, we invite you, anyone at all, come on down. And we'll take you to the side room over there. See in the windows? They're giving out a free Bible, and the counselors are talking and just encouraging those new believers that have a new life in Christ, the gift of God, and that's for you. Anyone else? Come on down. Anyone? Oh, it's fun to think about it. A new beginning, a new life, a drug addict, an adulterer, a liar, a thief, an arrogant person, a religious person. You come to Jesus as you are. 
and he changes you. He gives you a new birth. You're born again of the Spirit. Anyone, come on down. A good guy, a nice guy, come on down. Make a decision. Make a decision. Anyone, come on down. Make a decision. God bless you, sir. Good decision. God bless you. God bless you. One more. Is there anybody? Come on down. Come on down. Anybody at all. Please come. Just as you are. Okay, last and closing. Last plea. It's a plea. It's for us that are believers. And this isn't any power we have. We don't, we, we are not, we are unable. This is not a power. This is nothing to do with us as people. Thank you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. To the believer, to the believer, you want a new chapter in your life. You want to get the dust off your shoes. You want to get moving with God. You want something powerful and fresh. You want a new beginning. You, you want Jesus to be real to you all over again in a new way. You're going to make a commitment to God. In a, in a, by not you are able, but he is able. You're going to decide God is able to empower me, love me, forgive me, encourage me, fill me, challenge me, speak to me. I need, to, I need to go to a church where I get edified, where I hear the word, and I need definition. He's called the Amen in the book of Revelation. He said, under the spirit, the, the angel of the church of Laodicea, he said, I am the Amen, the faithful and true witness. Why did he say that? But because the church was lukewarm. It was all confused. It wasn't hot, it wasn't cold. It was passive, indifferent. There wasn't any fire, spit and vinegar, mustard, no spice, no jazz, no movement, no real ooh. And he said, I am the amen, the faithful and true witness. God will put your life in order. He'll give you definition. If you're looking for that in your life, come on down front here. If, you, if you're looking for something more from God, come on down front and we'll go over there into that room and we'll just uh, have a few words together. Come on down if you want some. As a, as a believer, just go on, go on into that room over there and we'll spend a few minutes together. And we'll, we'll believe that God will do this in your life that God will give you a fresh anointing, fresh oil, that God will do something new, something different, something awesome by his love in your heart. Maybe you go to bed tonight with just a joy in your heart and saying, I'm, I'm believing Jesus. I believe in Jesus in a, you know, personally. God bless you, sir. God bless you. You just say, I am. I believe in Jesus for something more. I'm not going to be dead, indifferent, but just, you know what I mean. I want the, the fire of the Lord in my heart, in my mind, in my understanding. I, I want uh, Lucius and Peter went off, but we're here today. They are gone, but we're here. We're the salt and the light. And God needs us here in the city of Baltimore. There's a lot that can happen in the city of Baltimore spiritually by the fire of God, by the people of God, by the work of God, by the grace of God. And if you don't have a church, come on in. 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, 6.30 tomorrow night. You are very welcome. We need each other in God. The love, the freshness, the blessing of Christ because we're trusting him and know that he is the God who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And we know that he is the God that is the I am, the bread, and will never hunger, and the water, and will never thirst. He is the one, the Alpha, 
the amen, the witness, the faithful and true, the bread, the door, the shepherd. He's the rock. He's the captain. He is the living God. Our God is not like their God. Our God is the living God, the almighty God, the powerful God, the answering God, the com compassionate God, the touching God, the God of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. And he's been sent into the world so we can know him. Wow. And the more I know him, the less the world is interesting to me. The less I know him, the more I'm seduced by the world and it will catch me. May we can say na, 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 na to the world and be rooted and grounded in the living God, the living Christ that we're celebrating this Easter season. The one and only, the living Christ, God Almighty, hallelujah, praise God. Amen. Would you close with me, please, in prayer? Father, we have been in your house tonight. We have prayed for this week. You have poured out and blessed us. You have spoken to people. You have loved people. You have encouraged us, Lord. You love us. We love you. We love where we are in history and in our geography. We are right here in a needy city in a place called Maryland in the United States of America. Bless our country. Move, God, in our country, in our land. We pray for your blessing on our president, on our government. We have great needs as a nation, but we look unto you, Lord, as our answer. We look unto you, God, as the one and only that will satisfy us deeply and fill us overflowingly and personally. Bless each and every one that came out tonight and send us home with your blessing on our lives and the new birth in those that are believing first time in their hearts and to those that have come forward and are looking for more, may you give it and pour it out to us all. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who we celebrate every day, Christ's name. Bless all the churches in the area tomorrow, Easter, and across the country with the reality of your person. In the name of Jesus, amen. Tomorrow night, we will have a healing service here in this room tomorrow night at 630. You're all welcome to come and join us. May God bless you in every way. Amen.